Super quick one today. Check this out. Got some digital tweezers just showed up. Don't know much about these. The company reached out to me and offered them up for a quick review. So let's give them a look. Uh, measurement types. So it's got a signal generator built into it. That's kind of cool. Sign pulse noise and arbitrary as well. That's really interesting. Data cable instructions, blah, 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 blah. Let's, uh, let's take a look. No idea what to expect here, but I do like the concept. I've always kind of thought it would be really nice to have some SMD tweezers that actually work. Ooh, me like, I like this already. Okay, well, they didn't cheap out. They gave us a nice case. And within that case comes our, I'm assuming this is what they're calling the data cable. It's got a USB connection. We've got some either replacement or different ends. Looks like replacements. I guess in theory you could wear them out, I suppose. And then this really cool little system this of this uh, headphone jack. All right. Um, almost nil for spring tension. Interesting. And then it's sort of scrolling around. I may have to play with this a little bit. Hmm. Why is it just wildly going crazy all on its own? I'm not selecting anything. All right, we've decided to stick to voltage now. Now we're on resistance mode. Sure enough, nothing across there. Let me grab a board. This episode brought to you in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts, and assembly, as well as 24-7 tracking of your order from start to finish. So we'll grab a rescue board because I have a known resistor on there that I soldered to these boards. It should have a 10 kilo ohm pull up right there. So let's see, how do we make out? I like the fact, oh, it's gone into another mode. Hmm, uh, long press? No, I don't want to go into calibration. Measure, yes. Yes. Why did it switch modes? It's like, like there's something stuck. All right, we'll go across there. Sure enough, 9.96K across my 10K pull up. Quick, really quick. Look at that, super quick. That's quicker than my fluke. Wow. Okay. Mm, interesting. I'm going to have to... So maybe... See, now we're into Picafarad. What is causing this to switch? I might have to actually read some instructions. Hmm. It definitely has a capacitive touch symbol, so... Well... There's something that's either acting strange or something that um, uh, that I'm not anticipating. Keep open. Yes, okay. Data error. Okay. Keep close. Open. Keep open. Yes. Save data. Okay. Maybe that'll stop it from jumping around now. Oh, this is where you can... Oh, it was an identify, perhaps where it will automatically identify what the component is. Let's see. Can it? Sure enough, jumps right to 9.7K, 
10K. And then we're going into capacitance, so just measuring the air, the, the air gap, the capacitance of the air, which makes sense. Um, well, I'll be darned. I am going to have to play with these a little bit and read some instructions, but I'm already, I'm already pleasantly surprised. Um, really pleasantly surprised. That's, that's not at all what I expected. Let's grab, let's grab a different component here. What happens when we go with something a little different? So what can we go on to easily here? Um, here's an unknown component. Get this set up for right hand use, but it's got a C designation. So I'm guessing, yeah, sure enough, 7.3 picofarad. That is just on to C13 on the blue pill. Um, I think I have a bad connection. Yeah, one picofarad rad on that. So let's go on one of the others. Let's go, this one's got an R designation. So in theory, no, we're still getting picofarad. Uh, oh, oh, it doesn't, no, sorry, it was C9, R is above it. Let's go on to the R designation. Uh, let's see if we can get on there, come on. And we're still getting a resistance, so that is wanting to range on the capacitance on a resistor, or at least what looks like it designated a resistor, but on mine it worked fine, and all these are capacitors, it's working fine. This might, there's not a lot of times I need to measure SMD um, in circuit, but sure enough, it's working. Um, I'll zoom out a little bit and you can see, I'm just bouncing around the board here on all this SMD, and sure enough, we are getting valid measurements off of all of them. Let's see if we can find a resistor. That's a resistor and we're not coming up. So let's see, can we put it into resistance mode? Come on. I don't want A. No, not signal gen, not calibration, measure. There's R. I think, again, I would benefit to read the instructions. At 23 ohms, we're getting there. Um, just the autofocus on my camera. Let's go on to one of the other ones. There's one. 17, 10 meg. So that is nearly open. There we go, 100K. 100K is a much more believable value. And sure enough, we're working good. I like it, guys. I really do. I I think these are going to have a place on my bench. And pretty simple setup here by the looks of it. Uh, all the guts are right here in the end. And this is going to be our charge. And uh, also, it looks like we can run it probably in circuit. Maybe. Maybe that's for another function. There we go. All the way. Mm, maybe not. Don't know. Gonna have to read about it. Dave Jones style. Uh, figured I'd give it a try and see uh, what I could do before I read into it. But I like it. I like it a lot, guys. So uh, we'll do a follow-up video and play with this in a future video. But for now, that's a quick look at the DT71 Mini Digital Tweezers. I think I'm gonna like them. We'll find out. Really good feel in the hands. Cheers, guys. Good luck in all your projects.